Ray Ramos on your right, Revolt Zoo. Yeah, he doesn't have a draw. <laughs> no. It, and versus Sheen on Bant Eldrazi. And Bant he'll start out on Noble Hierarch. Looks like he, he could have a very explosive start of his own, though. Two copies of Eldrazi Temple with that turn one Noble Hierarch. Mm -hmm. Got to watch out for things like turn two Thought Not Seers. Yep, and that outsizes everything in the Revolt Zoo deck. Going wide is nice, but it can be difficult to chip in for those last points of damage if your opponent is able to get on the board quickly with large blockers. Yeah, now Revolt Zoo, if you want to go that... But, you know, that turn four rule in modern Revolt Zoo breaks that one a lot. You see the, the Narnum Renegade turn one. This deck has a lot of turn three kills. Renegade's actually one of the better cards in the Revolt Zoo deck in this matchup because it can always attack into anything and at least trade. Yeah, and that's actually one of the cards here we've seen out of Aether Revolt. Um, outside of Fatal Push, this might be the best modern card in the set. Uh, a 2-3 Death Touch on turn one is way above the curve. Yes. Speaking of above the curve, the best cantrip in modern for our Banteldrazi player. Yeah, Kyder Sheen, Ancient Stirrings finds, and tell it smartly here, it's going to find Engineered Explosives. Now, is he looking to set this on one or two then in the matchup? Should have access to four mana on the following turn, so we can take this turn to figure it out. Frequently it will be two, but there's also enough games where it's one. Plays Eldrazi Temple and says go. Now, given that he can't play it and activate it on this turn, it just makes a lot of sense to wait to see what Ray does here. Yeah, I mean, if his land wasn't an Eldrazi Temple, he might have placed it on two just to be mana efficient. Mm -hmm. um, but getting those temples in play, especially when he has a second temple, so he does have one in hand, that means, you know, we could see Drowner next turn. Yeah. Because lands that tap for two are just that reasonable. Yeah, those cards are good. All right, looking forward to this turn two here from Revolt 2. Just how much damage is he going to push? Got to be careful because they knows there's an engineered explosives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, dumping a bunch of two drops like green belt, emissary, emissary, bushwhacker. And maybe doesn't care. Burning tree emissary into reckless bushwhacker. I guess he's got a one, a two, and a three in play. Yeah, nice so, diversity at great. casting cost. Swing them all. So a two, one, a three, two, and a three, three. That is eight damage. Not anticipating a block here. Possibly a removal spell. Path to Exile on the Narnum Renegade. They'll make that just a modest five damage, though it does give Ray another land. And the Renegade, that was the most valuable creature there. It is the one with Death Touch, also one of the two creatures attacking for three. Back over to Kyder. Does, we'll see what his follow-up here. Mentioned he has another temple, so this could be big. He only went to 15 on that attack. I would think something like a Drowner of Hope would be more than enough to get the game. Yeah, Drowner would be mighty nice here. The Eldrazi Scions get in front of Reckless Bushwhacker and just trade. The 5-5 five five is very hard to deal with. So here's another temple. We know he has Engineer Explosives in hand. A Reality Smasher pushed up to the front. Though if he tries to race with Smasher, that could end very poorly for him. Revolt Zoo can produce a lot of damage out of nowhere. Since Ray has already spent a Burning Tree Emissary and a Reckless Bushwhacker, uh, you know, there's only four Bushwhackers in the deck, though you do have to be mindful of a Tarkus command. That one can push a lot of damage as well. So no Drowner, but it is Reality Smasher. Now Kyder has to decide attack or block. The remaining cards in his hand are Cavern of Souls, Windswept Heath, and Engineered Explosives. So while he has a ton of mana acceleration, he actually, this is his only payoff card. Mm -hmm. It makes a bit of sense to wait and set up Engineered Explosives on two, but uh, if you don't think that Ray has it, getting aggressive faster will win the game. He, yeah. he, he doesn't have anything else going on besides that Explosives. And he hits Ray down to 10. Exalts up to a 6-6. Six, six. And I mean, that part makes sense, right? There's not at a 3-drop and a 2-drop in play for Ray that I don't know if I want to count on Engineered Explosives to be that good. Yeah. Now Ray will reload. Last turn he had a swing for 5. Still has plenty of cards in hand. It's also the fact that Ray just knows about the Explosives. It makes it a lot harder to capitalize. Swings for 4. Casts Green Belt Rampager. No Revolt. Hidden Herbalist. Oh, Hidden Herbalist. Thank you. 
and fetch land. So he could have revolted at that turn, but decides not to. Nothing really to do with the mana. Another land, Cavern of Souls, the pickup for Kyder. This is a problem. Yes. So all lands. Now the Smasher's swinging for six a turn, so he doesn't need much time. Just one turn could be enough. He does have the two for one with the explosives now. Given that Ray played into it and knows about it, that has to give you some pause. But when there's nothing going on in your hand, the action can just be forced. Kyder will fetch down to 10. Now, Ray has a Lightning Bolt in his hand as one of his remaining cards. Mm -hmm. Though because of that Exalt, I was going to say he could block and bolt, except that Exalted Trigger from Noble Hierarch pushes Rally Smasher just a little too far out of range. Mm. Reasonable chance that Kyder is just going to go for main phase explosives and pop it. Nice thing about that, as far as he knows, it leaves back Noble Hierarch as a blocker, which yeah. potentially gains him something like three, maybe even four life. So he will do main phase engineer explosives. We'll see if he cracks it right now. I guess he doesn't have to, right? If, he, if he's worried about a bunch of haste, like burning tree, burning tree, haste sort of things. He'll go ahead and get rid of it now. Emissary and Herbalist, both gone. Swings for six, puts Ramos down to four. Mm -hmm. yeah, Ray just doesn't have that many cards in hand. It's hard to have too explosive yeah. of a turn, and Kyder has a blocker. Two drawing up to three, and Ray does not have it. So game one goes to Kyder Sheen on Bant Eldrazi. And El Bant Eldrazi just has a lot of the stuff that makes it hard for the Revolt Zuda deck to actually close, particularly when it's on the draw. Well, yeah, and what we saw there from, from Kyder is that his deck's very good at ramping, I mean, he had a, what, a turn three Reality Smasher with Exalted? Mm -hmm. That's just good. Yeah, no kidding. So look at that, looking at the sideboards, going for Bant Eldrazi. Um, go, they oftentimes have a lot of tools to get around someone trying to go wide. It's one of their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We see the hate cards. None of them really work here. Graft Digger's Cage, Stony Silence, Rest in Peace. But then start to look at cards. Blessed Alliance, Disdainful Stroke, Thrag Tusk, Negate, Naturalize, Worship. Have to like that one. And Arjani Unyielding. Yeah, Blessed Alliance is a little on the inefficient side for the matchup, but uh, the card is still totally serviceable. Thrag Tusk, if you can get there, that makes sense. You might want to trim some stuff a little higher up on your curve to make room for that one. There's a couple Relic of Regenerative in the main deck, so Kyder can certainly board those ones out. And Worship's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, now, do you like anything like Thrag Tusk out of the Bant Eldrazi deck, or is it just a little too big? It's totally fine. Uh, it's really a comparison between the cards in the main deck. It's hard to get there, but uh, again, if you have that uh, Relic of Regenerative, you're certainly boarding that one out. Yeah, that part's easy. Now, over on the side of Revolt Zoo, he's got mostly his game one deck. I suppose the Lightning Bolts have not were not great that game. Uh, Path to Exile, Destructive Revelry, Thalia, the two mana Thalia, Rest in Peace, Grafdigger's Cage, Deflecting Palm perhaps, Declaration in Stone, anything you like here. Uh, the Path to Exile make a lot of sense. I really like Ray's configuration, the fact that he only has two Path to Exile. It's so rare that boarding in more than two is correct. Uh, so this is just a good configuration. Stops himself from bringing in three even if you wanted them. Uh, so he can just get the blockers out of the way, which is a significant problem for his deck. Uh, deflecting Palm is fine. Um, sometimes you can hit a five power creature, say a Reality Smasher, and that can turn the game on its side. Um, it's, it's not the best plan in a matchup like this. Um, if you're able to get in early, you can clean up a game with Deflecting Palm, but if you're getting in early, it likely means your opponent's not doing a great job of interacting with you anyway. Uh, I could feel like a mulligan in a lot of spots. Yeah. Now, I do really like Declaration in Stone here as well. Just if, if it figures if Path to Exile is good, then Declaration in Stone's probably okay. Yeah. And I guess one of the things, with, especially with a deck like Revolt Zoo, um, you really have to be careful about how many cards you sideboard out. Right. It's such a synergy-based deck. Um, coming out here, and I do actually want to look at that, uh, we're looking... Lightning Bolt, or is there some, or is there a creature that's a loser that you generally go away from? Hitting Noble Hierarch can matter a good amount in this matchup. Uh, frequently, the card you see uh, people throwing shade at in the deck is Curd Ape. It's pretty much the worst creature in the deck. It's bad Narnum Renegade. Yep. All right, we're going to see a second game. This time, Revolt Zoo is going to be on the play, so expect some fireworks. Over at Star City Games, we uh, talked earlier about Game Night. Now, some of our favorite Game Night creatures have migrated, as animals will do, over to playmats and sleeves. Those are available in the store now, starsgames.com slash creature collection. Though pig's not normally known as a migratory animal, you can pick it up now. Well, we can get back to the match, too. I know that's a, there's a lot, of, it's a lot of complexity going on in that one. 
my knowledge of species that are or are not migratory kind of starts and stops with birds, which I feel stick around way longer than they should. <laughs> I always think of the birds was that they come that despite sometimes their their lifespans, like the same bird never does the same trip, but yet the same flock of birds can migrate. I always think that's really neat. My interest in birds is clearly eclipsed by yours. Well, no, it's just kind of right. It's like, it's like the bird can't remember its way back home because it's never done it. Sure. So it's because it's, it's, it's he just has to speak in bird. He leaves directions I with have the other birds. I have a similar problem. That you never... <laughs> that doesn't... <laughs> I don't know if that's how what that means. <laughs> Ray will be on the play here. Game for our second game. Now, for Ray Ramos, a win here could likely mean top eight. Now, because Kyder has a draw, he's going to have to win both his remaining matches to get into the top eight. But that starts here. Both players keeping on seven. And it's going to be Wild in the Cattle from Ramos. Card once banned in the modern format. That's kind of wild, isn't it? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I see what you did. It's interesting when you go back to the history of the ban list. We were noticing that yesterday. We had a blue-black fairies deck, if you go back to our coverage, um, saying, boy, that deck sure is a collection of cards that used to be banned. And then right. we unbanned them, and <laughs> nothing happened. And the deck is still a shade shy of playable. Yeah, Ancestor Visions into Bitter Blossom. Maybe, maybe that wasn't as good as we thought it was. Right. It just As card pools expand and as design philosophies change, the relative power level of cards also shift. Sure, and it, yeah, so that doesn't necessarily mean at the time maybe it was worth banning. Bitter, Bitter Blossom was way too good for standard, certainly too good for block constructed. Things Not. change as we expand it into extended and into modern. So some more two drops from Rays. He sings with Nakato. It's going to be Narnum Renegade and Curd Ape. So just getting the most efficient cards onto the board here. Mm -hmm. And while this is three one mana creatures, engineered explosives, a little slow against a draw like this, even if Kyder has it. Yeah, the only way he can crack it on turn two is if he plays it on turn one, mm -hmm. uh, which means Ray wouldn't do this. Exactly. So Kyder is helped out by Eldrazi Temple, a turn two Sky Spawner. So some size of his own. Unfortunately, but, it takes and, both the Sky Spawner and the Scion to trade with any of these three creatures. Yeah. Another draw from Ray looks like Goblin Guide. Well, that's something that does one for one trade. If Ray had an Atarkas command, this, oh. is a, this combat stab would be Gof real ugly. Goblin Guide into Atarkas command is just. just uh, yeah. This deck's really fast. Ray does have to be a little bit concerned about committing another one mana creature now because Kyder could explosives and pop it on the following turn. Right. Uh, we'll switch that Eldrazi spawn out for an Eldrazi scion. Hold on. This one's those a. Those are different cards. <laughs> sure. Kyder would prefer the 1-1 one, one to the 0-1. It's an upgrade. You can't accidentally make the wrong token. It's not something that the game allows. No, no, he missed it. He missed <laughs> it. <That> means... <laughs> you missed the power on your token. That means, that means you got to get the 0-1. Here's Goblin Guide, the fourth one drop from Ray. Yeah, he's going to... This last card in his hand is a Tarkas Command. Oh, boy. Swing, trigger, another Sky Spawner. That stays on top. Yeah, that, that's that's definitely an Atarka's command. So Sky is going to try to block Goblin Guide. Thinking about it. So, if Ray has the Atarka's command, I feel like Kyder is on engineered explosives or lose. I'm inclined to agree. Yeah. this is a lot of damage here. And he's not top decking it. He's drawing Sky Spawner next turn. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna looks like he's gonna chump block the Wild and the Cattle and block the Sky Spawner. Here is Atarka's command. Pump the team and deal three. So Goblin Guide's going to live. Kyder, Kyder goes down to a 14 on the burn spell and then takes six more on the attack, goes to eight, loses both his creatures. He better sweep the board right now. And he can't, because of Eldrazi Temple, he, no, he can't even stirrings into it. Mm. Now maybe using that Sky Spawner he drew, he can chump block his way to another turn. Yeah, can it's, it's not good. Block away five power worth of attackers. Fetch down to seven. Yeah, after the next turn, he's going to be in a position where a lot of top decks from Ray actually just end the game. Lightning Bolt to Targa's command. It 
and there's nothing that Kyder could have done about this. No, Ray chose the most aggressive of lines, which takes away a lot of Kyder's decisions. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chance that last turn, Ray's play would have just been no plays swing, right? That's like that's pretty reasonable. Kyder would have to double block. Um, and yep. if Ray makes that play, then there's a lot more uh, interaction going on. But when Ray just puts pedal to the metal, mm -hmm. going to play everything, play around nothing, then Kyder's decisions kind of go away. Either he has the thing that Ray didn't play around, engineered explosives, or he doesn't. Right. Ancient Stirrings and Eldrazi Sky Spawner, the play for Kyder. Stirrings hit Thought Not Seer. That's going to be a little slow for this game. When your opponent has already <laughs> cast all of their spells and you need more than one blocker, that is not the best spot. Oh, and more pressure being added by Ray. All right, it's Curd Ape. And Path to Exile. The Sphinx not actually lethal. Yeah, it looks to be a little bit shy. It's one Scion point short. blocks Nakatl, and then Kyder just takes six. Okay. So Kyder's going to go down to one. So you might be thinking why? Ray just committed another one mana creature yeah, and engineered why play explosives. Kyrda, Kyrda. The thing is, Kyder has access to that and Thought Not Seer, either taking the card out of the hand or just making a 4-4 four, four versus a 2-3. Uh, that that Kurdeip's going to get outclassed at some point here. All right, Goblin Guide trigger here. Meanwhile, casting the Kurdeip yeah. allows him to overpower something like a Drowner of Hope a little more effectively. So the trigger was missed. Judge is going to rule on whether or not Kyder gets to, on, on just how to resolve the missed trigger. Pretty sure the trigger goes on the stack. It might be an issue of whether or not somebody it's, needs a warning. It's because the trigger is on, if the trigger is on Kyder's card, it would definitely be missed. Because it's on Ray's card, it's a little. And not announcing yeah. your Goblin Guide and Idol onto the Great Rebel triggers. That yeah. stuff can get you in trouble. So Ray missed the trigger, and then Kyder's given the option, well, would you like to have the trigger happen or not? Kyder <laughs> says yes, draws a Cavern of Souls, but goes to one. And can he survive? Seven cards in hand. They they need to be good ones. Ancient Stirrings. I guess if he hits he, Engineer Explosives, we have a game. Yeah, that would clean this up. And Stirrings is the card to, to find it. Can he do it? He does. Okay. Engineer Explosives. He needs an untapped land. Why? To, to sacrifice it. Why? Oh, it only costs one. Never <laughs> mind. He doesn't need anything. Here's Engineered Explosives on one. So yeah, committing. You said so. Committing that last curd ape. Uh, is, well, yeah. it, it, it ends up being a non-issue because in the following turn, Thought Not Seer is going to unclass it one way or the other. He can have it. Okay. Um, you know, something like double Sky Spawner can block four creatures. It wouldn't block that plus curd ape. A swing here. All the creatures are dead to the explosives. Talisman on top of the deck, and now Ray plays the lethal Narnum Renegade. Yeah, lethal and trades with anything. Yeah, not a bad card to have here. But for Kyder, something as simple as a smash or like a drowner would work here. I also think last turn Kyder, did he, did he missed a land? I thought he played a fetch land and went to one. Or no, that, that was that the that, turn he, he went to one previously. Um, yeah, he, he might have not made his land drop. And it's going to be drowner from Kyder. So that's... Very strong here. Ray needs to top deck burn now. He's got a Tarkus Commands and perhaps Lightning Bolt. So he's not, it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some creatures with haste, but the Bantel Eldrazi deck very quickly closes the window for those. Yeah, and this kind of shows your Curd Ape thing. So say Ray hadn't committed the last Curd Ape. Now if he had Curd Ape plus Renegade, um, that's not really any different. Right. You force Kyder to give up a little bit more material. Burning Tramissary and pass. You know, for Ray, I like attacking with the Renegade, at least trading yeah, with, the with the Drowner. Or with a Scion. Because as soon as Kyder finds Displacer for this Drowner, then your creatures are never working again. Right. Unlikely to make a huge difference. We're probably just looking at oh. top deck burn spell or bust. 
Yeah, I mean now, the, I mean the displacer is there. Yeah. So you're right. So he'd be he'd be minus one scion. That's not that's not where this game is going to be won and lost. Right. So with displacer plus drowner, not only is Ray never going to be able to attack, this is going to win the game rather quickly. Yes. Noble hierarch added. Kyder looking to have stabilized at one. Now he's got to still remember that Burn could be on top of the deck. Mm -hmm. So I see him contemplating using a Scion proactively to start connecting with this Drowner. I, I like the thought. The idea that he needs to turn the corner quickly is exactly where his, his head should be. Mm -hmm. Though I don't know if he has it this turn. He's going to use the Displacer to blink the Renegade. It comes back into play tapped, but with a 1-1 counter on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, triggers Revolt for itself. Yeah. And swings with Drowner. So Kyder did give up a little bit of value here. He could have sure. ended up with plus one Scion over this situation. But I like, right. I like use, the attack. Use a Scion to tap it, then blink the Drowner. Right. Ray down to 10. Ray goes to attack, so we're going to tap down the Narnum Renegade. And you'll see if he taps the Emissary. May not be necessary. He's actually, and actually that minus one Scion might cost him a turn if you look at the life totals here. Sure. You know, he has nine damage in play. Yeah, a little short. Here goes Burning Chair Emissary getting tapped. So Kyder's already dead to a burn spell. I, um, yeah. He, he wouldn't have lost a Path to Exile. That second tap didn't look necessary either. Path to Exile picked up from Kyder. Breeding pool. He, he will still have a lethal. It's just one turn later than it needed to be. Right. So if this next card, if Ray top decks him out this turn, then then that's going to be a missed opportunity. But I think barring that, Kyder is still in excellent position. Right. Yeah, it's up to a seven outer for Ray. That, that's the maximum possible here. And something like Bushwhacker, not going to be good enough? Uh, I suppose if he boarded in Deflecting Palm, that increases the number of yeah, his outs. Yeah, that would do it. Might be playing for a tie with that one at this point. Drowner swings for five. Kyder setting up for a kill next turn. Path, Talisman in hand. I thought not Seer. I mean, his best play might just be to blink this Drowner a couple times. and leave. If he could blink the Drowner twice, leave up Path, that seems like the safest thing he can do here. Mm -hmm. yeah, frequently, blinking Drowner is just Better than the cards in your hand? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to play Noble Hierarch. That's fine. He still has two activations worth of mana Yeah, here. I mean, it's, it's probably worse than blinking Drowner. Well, he doesn't, it doesn't cost him a blink, though. He yeah, still it costs has... him the Path. Sure. This doesn't matter. If Ray doesn't draw the burn spell, yeah, it's gotta be burn all here. of these win. And if it was burn. The it's... Ray would be, yeah, you'd be, you'd be putting that on the table. Yeah. Still might be deflecting palm, which makes for a weird thing. The game could have some yeah. different resolutions if that was the top deck. Kyder goes to, Ray goes to attack. Kyder blinks the drowner. Makes two signs. Let's tap out some things. Tap Renegade. Tap another guy, Burning Tree. Yeah, you go, go ahead and attack. Trigger Burning Tree Emissary. Oh, wow, two mana. Do it again. Two more signs. I suppose tapping it, not blinking it. Oh, that was it. end step. Race has no attacks. End step. Kyder blinks it, untaps, draws. And that's going to do it. Kyder Sheen, Bant Eldrazi. He defeats Ray Ramos. Stay goes to 11, 2, and 1. Halfway to the top eight, Kyder's going to need a win in the last round.